in general, it is difficult to accept the death of a relative or a friend. To accept Tony's death is impossible. Tony is there, always present, always alert, his door always open. For 20 years, I entered through that door and sat in front of him. He agreed to follow me in the delirium of my bifurcations and refrains, passing between the production of subjectivity and machinic heterogeneity into my chaosmotic universe. In Tony, never did the intelligence of the thing become complicity, and complicity transcending itself, doubling and its distancing the understanding of it. Tony, with gentle irony, would lead me back to reality. Reality. What was reality for Tony? I would say the practice of autonomy, the multitudes and the corresponding revolutionary program. For Tony, concept, reasoning and thought were always a poetic sonority, a noisy reinvention of the real. The real has to be invented in order to be understood. Maybe Tony died in order to explain to us what death is. He invented death to understand its plan in order to tell us how one can go beyond death. Even in this case, the point is to give a sound to the word, this word which one absolutely wants to deprive of sound and to limit to silence and to nothing else. No, it is not silence. The only silence is that of earring. Thus there is no death. There is only anticipation of the eternal and its becoming real. It is between singularity and eternity that life situates itself. Tony always felt this relation in such an intimate manner that he obstinately confused singularity and eternity. For him, what was worthy was the valued, was only this relation, when the structure of the finite exhibited the eternal and the eternal concretizes itself in singularity. How much he loved the singularity, the finite, and the eternal. Uh, Tony was a voyeur. He saw the world constructing itself in this very materialistic, multiple and creative explosion. Reality forming itself at every moment. <laughs> For Tony, the god of Genesis, worked even on the seventh day. Oh, Tony, how I love you, because for you there is no rest. 
and now in your eternity you don't rest. There is a Spinozian paradox that you were fond of. The more powerful the body, said the Dutch master, the more eternal. Being is augmented by the singular corporal spirit. Death of the powerful singular increases the power of the eternal being. Since you reunited yourself with the powerful being, cher Tony, our waiting for the revolution of being is briefer and more intense, the earring. Why did you leave now that the winds of power, love and revolution are slowly fading? Why did you leave when desire showed itself to be realistic, for sure, but ceases to be effective? Perhaps you are now the wind and the desire itself. <laughs>